Hello and welcome to another Josh Plays 40k painting tutorial. Today I'll be painting a Necron Ophidian Destroyer from the Sautech Dynasty. So let's grab some brushes and get started. So to start off with, once you've assembled your model, the easiest thing to do is to prime the models using lead belcher spray. This just uh, cuts out the initial uh, brush time using lead belcher as it goes all over the model. However, if you don't have the spray to hand, you can do it by brush. Once you're happy with your base coat of lead belcher, we'll be moving on to the initial shading. So for this, we'll be going with Nun Oil. Uh, this is literally to go all over the model, uh, so uh, obviously just work it in all over the crevices and into all the little recesses for the model all over the blades uh, the tail now if you've been following the box art for these particular models uh, you'll notice that the tail is is a lot darker but a nice way of getting it to show a, still a little bit of metal without actually painting it black as it looks very dark in the actual box art itself uh, a lot of people uh, I've seen a couple of different videos where it is painted black and then you work up from that. I must admit I found myself a, a better way of doing it which was as you can see I'm putting a second coat of the Nun Oil over the model uh, particularly only the, the tail uh, rather than the, the body itself. Uh, this is obviously just to darken that uh, lead belcher spray even more uh, and therefore obviously giving it a, a close to black effect but while still retaining the metallic look underneath. Obviously you don't have to worry about the tip of the tail because uh, again obviously we're going to shine that up as well. Once you're happy with those shades uh, obviously the next thing we want to do is start bringing a little bit of a shine back to that uh, lead belcher and for that we're going to be using Necron Compound as a dry brush. Now you'll notice that the models are a little bit wiggly uh, as they are really only supported by their tails so I would really suggest holding it as I am here to uh, make sure they don't snap or you have any unfortunate breakages. Uh, I very nearly did with, with one of these, uh, the ones I, I didn't film. Uh, but I was lucky enough to catch it before it broke all the way. Um, but I uh, certainly learnt my lesson before before filming this one. Now when you reach the tail, be very light and gentle over the edges, but you're really only looking to catch the spines of the tail, so the, the very sort of sticky out bits and, and the back obviously, uh, where it does protrude like a, like a spine. Um, you're not really looking too much onto the flat parts at the front of it, uh, as obviously we are trying to keep the, the darker black look for it. Once you're happy with that, we'll move on to the first of the silver highlights. For that, we are going to use Rune Fang Steel. Uh, this is a Citadel layer paint. Uh, it uh, is slightly translucent, but you will want to water it down a little bit first. Uh, but it makes a really nice sort of sh initial shine over the metal. And for this, you'll just be picking out sort of most of the raised edges uh, of the model, uh, particularly obviously the claws at the front. Obviously, we want to give them a really good shine, make them look really nice and sharp. So uh, obviously, when you're facing your opponents on the battlefield, you want them to know they're they're coming with some uh, weaponry attached. You'll also just want to pop uh, some rune fang steel uh, again on the side spines of the tail, uh, just increasing the shine. And again, obviously, initial basing to the tip. As I say, we want to keep that nice and sharp as it does look a bit like a knife. These models do typically come in threes, so I would recommend batch painting them. Uh, if, if you do such a thing, if you prefer working one by one, that's fine. Uh, I, I did the, the two separately and then I, I did this one for the video. Um, which is obviously not usually how I would paint. I would normally do all, all three in one go, um, or but I didn't feel that was necessary for the for the video. 
So that second silver highlight we're going to move on to is Stormhost Silver. And uh, this is just a, a, a very small, brighter highlight than Runefang uh, to go over the cables under the arms. Most of the claw arms have these initial cables uh, and this is just to start off a green glow we're going to have underneath those. Uh, but this is just to catch the very highest of edges uh, as you can see I'm doing here, just running the side of your brush down the sharp edges to uh, obviously catch those out uh, anywhere the light would really touch the model. And again, sort of roughly sort of one every sort of couple of tips of the tail as well. Not every single one of them, but any that you would feel are going to catch the light is a good way of working it. And then once you're happy with the silver, we can block in that chest piece with Abaddon Black. Uh, and that is just to uh, break up the uh, two metal rib cages uh, and uh, get it ready for the uh, green highlight over that uh, famous Necron symbol. Next we're going to prepare the energy balls and globes that are on the sides of these models. For this we're going to use Corax White. You do have to be careful with Corax White, it's a very thick paint. Uh, not terribly popular amongst a lot of hobbyists, I have to admit it's not my favourite white but I don't have a lot to choose from at the moment. Um, so you do have to give it a good, a very very good shake uh, and a bit of a water down but after that you, you do find it gives a good coverage if you can get it nice and smooth uh, to transition. Don't worry if you need two coats, uh, that is quite common um, but it will give a nice smooth transition uh, and coverage to the model. And then going into this particular part, we're going to use a starting point of Moot Green uh, just to start off the uh, the shading of these little green balls on the model. Uh, so anywhere where there's a, a little bit of a glow coming into that, uh, just put a little dab of Moot Green in there and then also in the eye sockets as well. And uh, we'll start applying that. It just starts the uh, the glow ready for another highlight later. You'll find that you'll probably want a couple of coats of this green. I will come back to it later as uh, it will dull down as it dries. Again obviously then starting off by putting the first layer over the uh, symbol on the chest. Do take your time when doing this. And then going back to the uh, orbs on the side of the body uh, I'm actually using a new paint now uh, from the new contrast range called Striking Scorpion Green. Uh, it's very close to a thinned moot green uh, in its in its colour, uh, but it goes on really nice and smoothly with the new formulas they've come out with for these contrasts uh, and, uh, and gives good coverage uh, and a nice starting point for getting that glow. If you wanted it slightly brighter, uh, you could also try the technical paint Tesseract Glow. Uh, obviously, that is a lot is a slightly more yellow in colour, um, but a lot brighter. And then going back to the cables under the arms, uh, for this we are using Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. Uh, when you put it over the top of a metallic, it gives a nice sort of shine uh, to the green underneath. Now, obviously, a lot of contrasts depend on what they are going over the top of uh, and uh, obviously with this one uh, going over metallics it, it gives a good shine. We're also wanting to put the uh, warp lightning over the blades, uh, the uh, those nice iconic blades that they're swinging around uh, as uh, this is a good starting point for the effects that we're going to put on later. Um, be quite liberal with putting this over, you want good coverage, you don't really want it to streak or show too much of the lead belcher underneath. Um, but uh, obviously at the same time you don't want to be you don't want it dripping off or or, uh, or pooling in certain areas do keep an eye on that and then a lot of these models as well have little bits of scenery built into their bases where the models are obviously attached into it uh, now for the stonework here I'm actually using a combination of two paints um, separately not uh, mixed together uh, of uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey and Skaven Blight Dinge. Uh, they're just sort of two different sort of tones 
of, uh, of stonework uh, that I find work quite well together. Uh, obviously, it's up to you sort of how you, you break apart. I think I did vary it from model to model as to what parts I did in what colour. Um, but for this, I sort of did for the rocks in Mechanica Standard Grey and then any sort of broken brickwork in the uh, Skaven Blight Dinge. So going back to those orbs, we're going to go in with the second coat now of Moot Green. Uh, this just gives that a, a good shine over the top of the uh, original coat. Uh, again, obviously with the little orbs on the side uh, and the nice chest piece. And then going also over the orbs on the sides of the body. And then to give that stone on the base some definition, we're going to go over that with a shade of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, this is just to dirty it up, uh, make it a little bit more in keeping uh, with the fact that it has been uh, broken down, probably rained upon, muddy and uh, a bit grimy from uh, years of war torn. So to start off getting the uh, glow on the blades on the arms, we're going to start with a dry brush of Moot Green. Uh, this is quite a light dry brush, do make sure there's not too much on your brush when you are doing this. Uh, obviously this is, sp I've sped this up uh, to show it because it is uh, obviously quite uh, long winded but you want a gradual uh, build up of, uh, of the paint over the edges of the model and obviously make sure to get both inside and outside of the blades. This gives a nice sort of starting subtle tone of the green ready for the highlight. And then keeping with Moot Green, uh, use the side of your brush and do a nice edge highlight around all of the sharp edges of the blades. So the interior and uh, obviously the around the edges of the blade. Now do also take your time and run your brush down the sort of each blade has a sort of middle line or, or crevice where it sort of curves off to the side. Uh, just very carefully take your time to run your brush along that line just to give that break up down the middle uh, and that really does help these blades to pop out and stand out on the model. It can be fiddly and it does take a bit of time and, and some practice as well to get the, the short straight line but if you use a small brush and keep a good good point to it when you uh, when you apply it you won't want too much paint on it you don't want to to overwhelm uh, the uh, the model when you're you're putting it down uh, with it sort of dripping off but you just want to keep a nice fine line and pull back in one sort of sweeping motion as best you can to keep it nice and nice and to straight and together And there we'll have our finished Ophidian Destroyer. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and a comment below. I will come back if you have any questions at all. Uh, but otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.